So, uh, Vele, things finally happened, Vele. Things finally happened. Our relationship was much more tight now. It was much more stronger. And December, uh, my father... Uh, okay, this is what happened. When I was born in, in 95, I was born alone. Ne? I was born alone. And I have a little sister. My little sister came 18 years after me. Like this simply means that all my life I was alone. So I've learned to be selfish and all that because of me being used to being the only child and, and all that. So my little sister came in, in, in 2013. So, but in 2012, our, my father managed to, to build a small house and so forth, you know, and we moved in 2012, December, right? Now, when we moved in the house, it was because the shack was about to fall. The shack that we were staying in was about to fall. Ne? And then the main house, which my father built for us, it was not fully complete in terms of roofing. Uh, the roofing, it was not the whole house which was covered. It was certain portions. And on the, gra the, on the ground, there was still normal soil. You know, the normal soil. So we were staying there. Uh, but you know what? I believed that my father is a hustler as well. He's doing his best, you know. Now... Uh, around that time, uh, my father got retrenched from work, you know, he got retrenched from work. I think that's when my hatred for the system started developing. I think that's when my hatred for the system started developing. I'm like, you know what? This system is not okay. It's damaging our parents. So what happened was that my father got retrenched from work, right? And then after he got retrenched for working almost 20 years at the mine, right? After that, his package, the entire package that he was given for working for more than 20 years was not even more than 50,000, I'm sure, you know? And I was actually hurt by that. They didn't tell me. I just found out on my own. I was hurt by that, that how can you work for a company for over 20 years and still and get retrenched or whatever they call it and get less than 50,000. You might find that even got 30,000. Imagine guys. And that time he took a loan that was obvious for him to build a house because he didn't have money to build a house at that time, you know. And that's when my 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 maturity in terms of life started. I've learned with my own parents so if you are unable to learn with your own family, then you will never learn. You must just start with the little details that's happening in your family. Observe. My parents are waking, right? My father is doing this. My mom is doing that. My aunt is doing this. My cousin is doing that. But are they where I want to be in life? And the answer will always be no. Because we always have greater dreams, you know? And I got hurt by that. And I could see him whenever he's alone that this thing is eating him. But you are an employee. You, there's nothing you can do about it. Because even take, taking the company to, to the lawyers, you need money, number one. Only people with money win court, uh, with, win court cases because they can afford the most expensive lawyers. Now you are poor. Who is going to represent you? Even though they've robbed you, but for as long as you're poor, you even even your mentality, the way you think, is, is just poor and in general, you know? Uh, I, don't, I don't blame him. I don't blame my parents. Uh, it's just how uh, they grew up as part of the system. And I'm actually glad that I was able to see it from a young age. But it was not something that I could publicly talk publicly talk about. You know, uh, but now I have the confidence to talk about it because if you laugh at my father right now, I can wake up and buy him a car. I can wake up and give him 50,000 or 100,000 whatsoever. Now I'm confident to talk about these things because it's in the past now. So what I'm trying to say is that certain things you can never know until they are, they're, they've passed. So I was not comfortable talking about such, you know. And they were not as well. Now they can talk about it. Now they can talk about it. It's in the past, right? So, Matric Vele, uh, December Vele, you know what? Uh, 
things were happening things were happening and we were waiting for for metric results having fun and all that remember at that time i i have only been with like one serious girlfriend right now if i've started the activities that were favorite i was not like that before i like, understand it's life circumstances life happened you know now 2012 valley metric waiting for results the results came out in january right and the results when they came out i've passed in they call it i forgot that thing they call it there is diploma there is high certificate there is i think it's bachelor bachelor what what yeah i've passed with that thing uh, I think that was more or less the last time I've seen my metric certificate. Even today, I don't know where where is my metric certificate. I don't know, honestly. But yeah, so I've passed very well. And TUT rejected me on the first course that I've applied, which was economics. And they've taken me on the second course, which was uh, local government finance. That was the second course they took me in. And my relationship, my love life was perfect at that time. My girlfriend passed, my best friend passed. So the good part about it was that my best friend and I were going to the same varsity. Still from the same high school to the same varsity. The only thing which I was worried about was that my girlfriend was going to a different university. So I was a bit worried that what if she changes on me? But I'm like, you know what? This girl gave me her virginity. She loves me, right? And she, she has been with me ever since I was staying in a shack, you know, and she can't leave me now, you know. So I was, I was okay eventually with that. And my little sister was born in 2013. Uh, there's only like two of us. So it's more like I have a son and I have a little sister. So those are my main two responsibilities in my life, I would say, up to this point, you know, because my parents told me that they don't want... Uh, me to they don't want to make me feel like i'm i'm responsible for them they are still able to do things on their own and i will help where i can you know uh, that's why even today my mom still working is she still working it's her choice we have talked about it and agree on that you know so i have a uh, 2013 vele uh, everything was proper now, when I was about to go to varsity, I told my girl that, baby girl, you see now that I'm going to take like three months without seeing you because we're going to different provinces and all that. Let me hit it for the last time, baby girl. Let me hit it for the last time, you know. And uh, she came, Vela, well, hit it for the last time before we went to different universities and all that, you know. And yeah, that was dope, man. That was like, I felt it. That was true love at that time at that time now we i went to varsity so when i was going to varsity uh, my mom gave me 400 rents i remember my mom gave me 400 rents and that was the first time going to pretoria she gave me 400 rents and she gave me the 400 rent that she gave me hundreds and something that i was supposed to use for taxi ne? And she gave me a big bag. The bag, it was actually filled with food. So my mom has always been protective over me and all that. So the big bag was full, filled with food. So she gave me grocery from home. Imagine carrying pap, rice, everything, one bag. So people thought it was clothes. Can't eat food inside. You know? And I told my mom that, give me money. I will buy food for myself. She said, no, you are still young. They will rob you in varsity. So she bought me grocery and I went to varsity with it. Now, at the varsity, the person that was supposed to welcome me uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a cousin of mine, part of the family, you know, he was almost done with varsity. So uh, he fetched me from, I actually left Beggarsford and I went to Pretoria. Then I got off the taxi rank and I was carrying this big bag. And when I was carrying this big bag, my mom warned me about people in Pretoria that they're going to rob you, especially when you are first year and all that. But that bag was too heavy. 
My mom said I must not trust anyone with that bag. But I was unable to carry that bag. So there was this Nyaupes who came and said, Eh, hey, Mfanami, I lapo, we are guy, and I must like, Rankua, Rankua. Then he helped me carry the bag. He carried the bag for me. And that was much better. You know? And I gave the guy about 20 rands, I, I remember. So he showed me the taxi to Rankua. Shout out to him. Even though I can't, I can't, if I would know the guy, I would literally take him out of the situation he's in right now. But I don't think I would ever re remember him. But I've helped uh, such people uh, in my life before. I've actually taken a couple of people off the street. But obviously it was off media. You wouldn't really know who I'm referring to. Now, I got into the taxi and then uh, my cousin fetched me at the Harangua taxi rank. That was my first time in Pretoria, first time in Harangua. That's where the story started. That's where the journey started now. So he took me in and then I stayed with him for about a week or two while I'm looking for my own accommodation. Right? I was looking for my own accommodation and all that. And I was talking to my girlfriend every day. I was talking to her every day on the phone. Uh, we were talking on Facebook. Uh, WhatsApp was not really famous at that time. The only thing which used to be famous at that time was Facebook. So we were talking on Facebook and all that. Phone calling each other, making, uh, buying this Vodacom three minutes at that time. You know, uh, my cousin showed me the ropes. He showed me the varsity, that this is the varsity. This is what's happening in varsity and so forth. So I've stayed with him for about two weeks and then he helped me find a room. So I found a room and I also found roommate. Ne? So the room that I was staying in in 2013, it was a stop nonsense. Do you see this stop nonsense, uh, this stop nonsense structure which they use to cover clinics? Like you see public clinics, the type of stop nonsense they use. Uh, I actually stayed in, in a room that was built using those things at that time, you know. It was dope for me. It was dope for me. I didn't mind at that time. So that was my first room. And I don't know how to cook, number one. You know, it was quite tough. I don't know how to cook. My mom used to, I would say my mom treated me like a, a, a cheese boy, even though she didn't have anything to actually offer me. But she would do everything for me. She would do each and everything for me. So I went to varsity not knowing how to cook because of my mom. I think she overspoiled me, you know. And I think it was because I was her only son. Just maybe I don't know what could be the reason behind that. So I just started being stubborn when I made money. When she wants to control me. Where are you going? I'm like, mom, it's none of your business. You've been controlling me for so many years. Now I'm tired. It ends today. I have my own money. I have my own car. I decide where I go. When I get there, I will call you that I arrived safe. Don't ask me who I'm, where I'm going. I'm going with who. How many condoms do I have? Mommy, it's none of your business. You must focus on the little child. Because I feel like she was becoming too much like controlling. You know? Because if that was the case, I, th I don't think I would even have the nerve to be where I am. So I wanted to be my own man. Uh, I wanted her to stop spoiling me so that I can feel for myself certain things, you know. Now, uh, during the progress of March, during the progress of March, when I was in my room, I have already registered, started attending classes. People... There's a difference between coach and hopozo, right? Whatever I'm telling you right now is based on hopozo, not the coach that you know. Coach doesn't like school. Coach hates the system. He hates everything which has to do with school or the system. But hopozo used to love school at that time. That's just the truth, right? It's part of life. It's part of growing up and so forth. So... At that time, uh, I used to love school. I used to attend. I used to focus on my first year, right? You only stop losing focus when it comes to school after you, 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 you get used to everything. You start failing and so forth, right? Now, around March, when I was in my room, I came across this photo on Facebook, right? 
Now on this photo, it's a guy that I don't know. And my girlfriend. So literally the guy is, they took them a picture and the guy is actually holding my girlfriend. Like he's holding her from behind. I could literally see his dick right on my girlfriend's ass touching. Even though the picture was not showing, but now I could see it. That nah, nah, nah. this can be an ordinary picture. Now, I'm seeing this because she liked the photo. I'm not friends with the guy. I didn't know the guy. She liked the photo and I've seen the photo through what she liked. Randomly so. And then I went deep into this guy's profile. And I found lots of pictures of him and my girlfriend. Hey guys, I was heartbroken. That day, I didn't eat. I was like, what's going on here? Does it mean that she's cheating on me? But you know, when you love somebody, even after what you hear about them, or even after what you see about them, you, you, a part of you still denies that it's true, you know? So I could see that something is happening here. But a part of me said, nah, she can't do this to me. She can't do this to me. I'm going to school so that I can graduate, buy her a house, buy her a car. I'm doing this for her. She can't do this to me, you know? And I didn't tell my friend about it. My best friend, I was still staying with him at that time. I didn't tell him about it. I kept quiet. But this thing was eating me. It was eating me inside. And then I ended up confessing to my friend. I'm like, boy, this is what I saw. And he tried to convince me otherwise. So what, what he did to show that he's a true best friend... What he did, he approached that guy. He started swearing at that guy. That nigga, I will kill you. That time he doesn't even have a gun. Nigga, I will kill you. The girl that you're busy with is my boy's girlfriend. He did that behind my back. I didn't send him to do it. You know, That's, that was because he saw how he, know, he knew how much I loved the girl. And he, just, he was just tired of seeing me get hurt. Right? Now, the guy that I'm referring to is, 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 is still my friend even today. Now, uh, let me just put in my pillow correctly. Yeah. So, so, March, month end. Now, it's time to go home, you know. It's school, school holidays and so forth. Now, it's time to go home. Then I, I went home, right? I went home. I remember it was month end March. <laughs> so my mom was so happy to see me. My father was normal. You know how, how, how fathers are. We don't really show our feelings. He was happy. <laughs> Sorry. But my mother was just screaming, you know, my son is back from varsity. You know, she was always worried, calling me every second. Are you okay? What do you need? And so forth, you know. It, it, it got annoying at some point, even though I understand it's parents' love and all that, you know. Now, uh, time came. Now, I, 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 my girlfriend came home as well because schools were closed. Remember, the reason why I focus more on relationships is because my success is based on relationships. I actually got successful not being aware that I'm getting successful in the name of love, trying to get revenge. You see, getting uh, when 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 you are hurt, when you are, when somebody hurts you, that's 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 a reason enough for you to wanna push even harder to prove them wrong. But at the same time, when you get successful, you start changing your mindset. You start seeing that. Fuck, this is not worth it. This is really not worth my time. You know? Now, it happened now uh, that I, ha I have to go see her. Now, I went to see her. Uh, I went to see her for the first time in three months. That was the longest time we've ever been separate, me and her. Like in three months. So, when I'm walking with her at the Kasi, a Mini Cooper passes. A random Mini Cooper. She would start screaming. Keep in mind, I don't have a car at that time. I don't, I don't have a car at that time. She would scream whenever a car passes. And I would ask myself, this is not the girl that I know. What happened to her? You know? 
And even the way she talks, like she's like she has changed. You know, she's talking about varsity. She's talking, she's using the same language as varsity girls. She's no longer the girl that I used to know. She, even the way she dresses, it's like it's not the same. Keep in mind, I know that she might be cheating on me because I've seen pictures. But I'm not touching that subject because I don't want to make her angry. Keep in mind, how, how stupid was I? A person is cheating on you and you don't want to ask them because you don't want to make them angry. Hey, yes, people, get, get money. That's the only advice I can give you. Get money, you will see. You will never get hurt. Never. You only get hurt because you are poor. So I was hurt that, okay, now she loves cars randomly and I'm so far from getting a car. I'm so far from getting a car. Now...